In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks be to God for all of you. In power and in the Holy Spirit. Let us join together and confess our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and he sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From these we shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the whole Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. I'd like to welcome everyone to worship this morning. Uh, first of all, thank you for everyone who uh, supported the scouts with their pork chops yesterday. They had a very good turnout uh, for that. Um, just a reminder, this week, uh, ballots will be mailed to all members. If you do not receive one, please contact the church office about that. And also, if you haven't signed up for our, um, mid our emails, please do so. Uh, you can email um, the church office will write your email address down on the back of the blue card um, because every week we're sending out a midweek meditation and if you would like to get that, um, uh, please do so. Does anyone else have any announcements? Okay, turning our attention to our prayer list, uh, we have a, a few additions today. Um, first of all, let's... Um, Keep uh, Steve Hendrick and his family in our prayers with the loss of his brother, Buddy, this week. Um, also, Dean Hendrick um, had some pretty serious back surgery this week on Wednesday, and so please keep Dean in our prayers. And um, on a positive note, I have a thank you card to read. Thank you very much for your cards and texts. Your thoughts and prayers are truly appreciated. Blessed to be part of this church family. Love Ben and Frank, and we rejoice that she's doing much better after her recovery from surgery. Do we have anyone else to lift up in prayer today? <clears throat> Let us go to God in prayer. Almighty God, as we come together to worship you, we thank you for your presence among us at this time. We are reminded that humankind is made in your image. We are reminded that we are called to love our neighbor as well as you, O oh God. We ask that you would give us wisdom and discernment, that you would help us to follow the call that you have put forward for us. We thank you so much for your blessings upon us this day. We thank you for the fact that we can worship you. We can leave our cares and our concerns behind, that we can come here together in service to you and the cause of bringing people to Jesus. We ask that you be with those that we have lifted up in prayer and those that are on our hearts and minds, for you know the needs of all people, O oh God. We pray for the tensions that are in this world right now. We pray for those who are suffering. We pray for those who are hurting. We pray for those who desperately need a Savior. We ask that you would encircle this world with your arms. While things at times seem out of control, we know that you are in control, oh God. We thank you for your presence and the fact that you are with us, leading us, and guiding us. Help us to serve you better, O oh God. Help us to remember to be your children, 
each and every day. And now we pray as Christ taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debts. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, and the Brothers and sisters, please join with me now in praying our prayer of confession. Almighty God, hear our struggle to know your will among our doubts. And when we live here, send us out enriched by your presence among us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hear the good news of Jesus Christ promised in the gospel to all who repent and believe. As I live, says the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but the wicked turn from their ways and live. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. Join with me now for this reading of Psalm 99. The Lord reigns, but the nations tremble. He sits enthroned between the cherubim. Let the earth shake. Great is the Lord of Zion. He is exalted over all the nations. Let them praise your great and awesome nature. He is holy. The King is mighty. He loves justice. You have established. Exalt the Lord our God and worship at his footstool. He is holy. Moses is He spoke to them from the pillar of the cloud. They kept his statutes and the decrees he gave them. Exalt the Lord our God and worship at his holy mountain, for the Lord our God is holy. these our gifts of our tithes and offerings. Use these gifts that you might multiply them for the upbuilding of this church and for your kingdom upon this earth. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. First scripture this morning comes from the book of First Thessalonians, the first and <laughs> tenth verses. To the church of the Thessalonians, in God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ, grace and peace to you. We always thank God for you, mentioning you in our prayers. We continually remember before our God and Father your work produced by faith, your labor prompted by love, your endurance by hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. 
For we know, brothers loved by God, that he has chosen you. Because our gospel came to you, not simply with words, but also with power, with the Holy Spirit, with deep conviction. You know how we lived among you for your sake. You became imitators of us and of the Lord. In spite of severe suffering, you welcomed the message with joy given by the Holy Spirit. And so you became a model for all the believers in Macedonia and Arcadia. The Lord's message rang out from you, not only in Macedonia and Arcadia, but your faith in God has become known everywhere. Therefore, do not need to say anything about it. For they themselves report what kind of reception you gave us. They tell how you turned from God to idols to serve the living true God and to wait for his Son from heaven whom he raised from the dead, Jesus who rescues us from the coming wrath. Sanctify us for your words and from the Matthew's Gospel, the 22nd chapter, the 15th through the 22nd verses. Then the Pharisees went out and laid plans to trap him in his words. They sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians. Teachers, they said, we know you're a man of integrity and that you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. You aren't swayed by men because you pay no attention to who they are. Tell us then, what is your opinion? Is it right to pay taxes to Caesar or not? But Jesus, knowing their evil intent, said, You hypocrites, why are you trying to trap me? Show me the coin used for paying the tax. They brought him a denarius, and he asked them, Whose portrait is this, and whose inscription? Caesar's, they replied. Then he said to them, Give to Caesar what is Caesar." And to God, what is God? When they heard this, they were amazed. So they left him and went away. Sanctifies through your words. Your words are true, O oh Lord. Today happens to be recognized as Stewardship Sunday. Well, the last few years, I've kind of wondered, how do I miss Stewardship Sunday? Because as I was preparing for today, it was readily apparent. However, it occurred to me, this is the weekend that we go to the Blowing Rock normally and would be worshiping up at Mount Bethel. And typically that particular uh, <coughs> Sunday, I don't really look at the church calendar, but go with more of what I'm feeling is appropriate for that. But since today is Stewardship Sunday, I think it wouldn't do justice to the lectionary text to not preach upon them. And so I thought a lot about what stewardship means. It's probably one of the most touchy things there is to talk about in the church. It's the thing that makes people feel the most uncomfortable, probably one of the most private things that people feel is between them and God. And it is, yet, it's something that is, needs to be taken serious. I heard a story once about a, a man who had some issues with his life and he, he went and sat down and talked to the minister. And things got better. He was a little bit frustrated with his career and it not moving forward. And the man said, Pastor, I promise you today that I will give 10% of my salary to this church. And the minister said, well, that's great. The man said, I make $200 a week, and, and maybe it'll go up one day. So some five or ten years passed, and the man had risen through the ranks and became a, a manager of a very strong business. And he then sat down with the minister again, and he said, Preacher, I'm having a little trouble with this because I, I said I would give my 10%. But it's, it's much harder now because I'm giving $200 instead of 20 And the minister said, that's okay. Let's just pray about this. And so he took the man's hand and he said, 
Oh, Lord, I thank you for my brother. And I ask that you will reduce his salary down. It's sort of a funny thing, but it does make one thing. Because there are those among us who are people who are blessed. And we are blessed by the hands of Almighty God. Should we not then joyfully return a portion to him? As we know from the political aspect of this country and the tensions in it right now, paying taxes is probably one of the most um, hated things that we do. And it's one of the most tense things on people worrying about our others paying their share. And it shows that even in Jesus' time, this was an issue. And this is late in Matthew's gospel. And so these Pharisees have increasingly become frustrated with Jesus because he has become a popular teacher and the masses are following him. And so they set out to trap him because, you know, unlike here, we can criticize the government. We can say what we want. We have the freedom to post anything or write anything without fear of repercussion. It's not the same everywhere in the world. And in Jesus' day, critic, being critical of the Roman Empire was a good way to end up in major trouble. And so they start set out to trap him over the sticky issue of paying taxes. Because if he says everyone should pay taxes, they feel like the people will lose faith in Jesus. Yet, if Jesus comes out and says, says don't pay your taxes, then he can be reported to Rome for stirring up <coughs> against the government. But what does Jesus do? He answers with the question. He says, who pictures on there, and they say Caesar's. And he answers in a way that really goes to the quick of the matter. He says, render to Caesar what is Caesar's, and render to God what is God. But then the question becomes that we have to answer for ourselves, what is God's? What are the blessings that we should return to him? And what should we do with the blessings that we ourselves have experienced? Are we on this world just to look after ourselves? Or do we not have an obligation to look after neighbor and to what is best for the common good? Because we can use money to batter people down or to lift them up. At any time that we try to use it in a bad way, we're hurting our relationship with God. Why did Jesus say, do you think, that the love of money is the root of all that's evil? He didn't say money was evil. Money is an inanimate object that has no ability for good or evil. Saying that money itself is evil would be like saying I have an evil ink pen or a very good ink pen. But it's the love. And it's when people start loving it so much that it takes the place of the important things in life. And unfortunately, we've seen people like that in our own lives. And why allow that? Why allow some inanimate object to have such a hold upon us? Why don't we allow God to have such a hold upon us? Why don't we allow God to work with us, to change us, to mold us in his image? Because don't we want to be the very best version of ourselves? You know, Sometimes we say, well, people have changed. And when we say that, it's usually meant in a bad way. But change itself is not bad. And since I'm closer to 40 than I am 30, I certainly hope 
that I'm not the same person that I was 10 years ago. I hope that I am a better version of myself. And I think that only comes from our relationship with God and allowing God to mold us. Because the people that should be most fearful are the people that don't change, that don't grow, that only allow things to stay the same. You know, I've seen so much tension in the last few months. And I think it's because we've been thrust into changes that we have not wanted, that we don't maybe agree with, that we don't like, and yet things are forced upon us. We can allow that to break us. We can allow that to destroy us. We can become bitter and disappointed. Or we can allow ourselves to make the best of it. You know, even within the church, you know, I've heard people say, well, we just need to be back to normal. We just need to do things the way that we've always done it. And unfortunately, in the times in which we live, that's not possible. Though if we were to think on it, that is probably what all of us want. It's kind of a return to being normal. In fact, one of the uh, the greatest uh, elections in the country or a popular vote was by President Warren G. Harding who ran on the campaign of a return to normalcy. That was his slogan. And that's something that I think we decide. Yet, Maybe if we're struggling right now, maybe if we feel like there's mass chaos, maybe we need to take a step back and focus on God. Because it doesn't matter what we love. It can be money. It can be a car. It can be even the smallest of all objects. But if we allow it to, it can block Almighty God. There's a reason that I don't uh, do yard sales. One thing is I would rather give something away than sell it. Um, and I'm not critical of people who do. The other thing is I put an extremely high value on um, sentimental attachment, which is something that can never be bought or paid for in, in currency. And the reason I wouldn't have a yard sale, even though I probably desperately need to, is things have stories and things that people have given me and stuff. And, you know, um, even little knickknacks and things from past people who I no longer see. You can't, for some reason, charge $95 for a coffee mug that a former Christian had given to you. In fact, if I tried to price things of what I value them, the value would be too high, potentially. But we can put value on anything, and there's nothing wrong with emotional attachments. It's when we become so focused upon them that we put them ahead of God and ahead of our love of neighbor, that they become problematic. You know, when Jesus was asked, what is the greatest commandment? They were trying to trap Jesus again with that because if he picked one, you know, it'd obviously be an argument of what it could be. They said the greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and love your neighbor as yourself. It rolls all the Ten Commandments into one. In fact, it simplifies the gospel in the simplest terms. And while that is the greatest commandment, it is the hardest thing to keep. Because at times it is hard to love God that much. Because that means denying self. 
To love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and mind and body. That is a huge commitment. And then to love one's neighbor as one's self. That's not the way we operate. But it's the way that we should operate. The challenge that is ahead of us. Because we need to allow God to stretch us, to mold us. When we hear the sermons and scriptures and these things, people nowadays are too quick to cut out the parts of the Bible that they do not like. It is too easy to say that was written in another time and another place for another people. But when we start removing bits and pieces, we're only left with the scriptures we like. And we're only left with the scriptures to say what we want them to say. And so we must be very careful because if we are taking the scriptures seriously, we should sometimes leave feeling stretched, worn out, like we need to do better. But we should not leave without hope because our God is a God that believes in hope and believes, surprisingly enough, in all of us. So why don't we allow God to make us in his image? Why don't we allow God to use us as an example of, of stewardship, giving as we are able for God's glory? Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for these words of Scripture. We thank you for the comfort and the fact that they stretch us. Help us to serve you each and every day as your people. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Please rise to the benediction. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ in the love of Almighty God, in the communion of the Holy Spirit, rest in mind with each of you, both now and forevermore. Amen.